so do not know how I did that. I got this cord wrapped around this thing and knocked that over going that way, and I was going this way. So I, I must have dusted around it in a, in a flash. <laughs> alternate universe thing. Well, we're glad you're here. We're welcome to Word Alive Church here in Aylwood City, Pennsylvania. We're glad you'll be able to join us this morning. We're going to have a good time today. We're going to bless God and give Him glory. Amen. And we're so glad that you're able to join us. And we miss you guys. I want you to know that. Um, just a few announcements here. I want to mention about the fact that the homeless thing, uh, we're still collecting, but we're only collecting the food. We don't need any clothing right now. It's just food. And if you bring it, bring it the foyer will be open. You know, probably good time. Anytime after 9 o'clock. Uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock be good. And the foyer will be open to be able to do that. So, so you can bring that food and not any clothing. And let me get my glasses on and magnify the word. <laughs> and I also want to mention about the, um, we're having on April the 10th, which is Good Friday, we're having communion. And we want you to join us. Just tune in. And we're going to take communion on Good Friday, April the 10th. At 6 o'clock, and you'll need bread, and you need a drink. Water will be good, or fruit juice will be good, but we're going to do that 6 o'clock on Friday, April the 10th. And we'll do it online so you can see us. we got some birthdays this week. We want to wish happy birthday Tracy Petrella, Jesse Schaefer, and Kathy Starkey. So happy birthday to you ladies, and anybody we missed, happy birthday to you as well. And we just want to remind you that God is still on the throne. Amen. I mean, no, he tells us he's given us power to tread upon those serpents and scorpions and over all viruses. So keep that in mind. You know, Amen. when we submit to God, we resist the devil. He's given you power and authority to do that. Let's remember that greater is he that's inside of us. Amen. <laughs> than he that's in the world, you know. And I like that Galatians 6, 9. Do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap. I'm here to tell you, we're going to reap. We're going to overcome this. We're going to overcome because greater is the Spirit of God. God is greater. Amen. Greater. So let's remember that. Let's pray. Father, we're going to bless you. We're going to give you glory. We're thanking you that we're in your presence. We're going to thank you for you are God and you're our God. We bless you, Father, and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, happy Palm Sunday to you, everyone. If you can, sing with us. Jesus rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you today, Lord. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We, we long for you today, Lord, we long for you, cause when we see you, cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears 
Father, we just welcome you here in our homes. Welcome you here in this situation we find ourselves in, Lord. We just want you to be Lord. This verse keeps coming into my heart this morning. It's in him that we live and move and have our being. So he's actually in us. Wherever, wherever we go, he is in with us, protecting us, and in us. He's the all-sufficient one, the God of all plenty. Amen. Oh, Jesus, you are amazing. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. I 
waiting for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of Glory, the King of Glory. The truth and the justice shines like the sun in the world's brilliance. The King of glory, the King of love, our peace. This is amazing grace. This is a very so thankful for all that you've done for us, Lord. Let's sing Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered. Yes, you did. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. Yes, that you would take my place. that you've done for us, Lord. Lord, you rode into Jerusalem with a plan that we were on your mind, even though we, we were celebrating your entry, Lord. You knew that you were celebrating our freedom. So thank you, Lord, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. We're free from sin, free from the law of sickness and sin and death. Hallelujah. So we say yes to you this morning. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will. That's your name. When my heart is heavy all my days, yes, I will. 
God, but never fails. We're not failing me now. You won't fail me now. And the rain is the same God who was never late. He's working all things out. Working all things out. Oh, yes, I will. Since you're high, you know I will try. Yes, I will. Press your name. choose to praise, to magnify and glorify your holy name. So nothing can stand against you, Lord.
you give us breath Give us our next breath, Lord. You breathe life into Adam, and humanity is still breathing. So we want to breathe for you, Lord. So we just declare over our homes, over our, over our bodies, over our lives this morning that fear, any fear that we're battling, Lord, Lord, does not stand a chance. When we stand in your perfect love, it drives out fear, Lord, because in your presence, Lord, there's joy and peace. So Lord, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, your love, your power, your sound mind. So we receive it today in Jesus' name. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain is all I know, I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. Stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love.
all of you this morning. I can't really see you, but I know you're there. Psalm 118. It speaks about the triumphal entry of Jesus. It says, the stone which the builders refused has become the head of the corner, the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is a day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. And that's what they cried out on Palm Sunday. Hosanna, save we pray. Albert Barnes says it simply means Hosanna, simply means save, we beseech you. And it's right out of the Bible, isn't it? Save, we beseech you. The Living Bible says it this way, help us, save us, give us success. Help us, save us, give us success. And that's precisely what Jesus came to do for you and me. Help us to save us and to give us success. God. He was exalted. He that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. That's Jesus. We're exalting Him today. Just like on Palm Sunday. Giving, giving Him acclamations of praise for what He was about to do. Glory to God. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. Glory to God. So let's celebrate today. You know what? They did also, many times, they would blow the shofar. Now you say, what's a shofar? It's, it was a ram's horn. It was a trumpet. And they would blow this thing for several reasons. One was to declare that God is over this nation. We're going to blow it today declaring that God is over this nation. It also means a triumphant celebration. The body comes together with joy for a triumphant celebration. That's what they did on Palm Sunday. The Jewish people, not the leaders now, not the Jewish leaders, but the Jewish people came together to celebrate and give him acclamations of praise as a king, as a conquering king. Glory to God. And then it's a charge to serve, a charge to serve. In other words, distribute seed. If you've got some word that you can distribute to somebody, if you can take this clip when you get it later and send it to somebody else, please do. Because it's harvest time. This spring is a harvest time. That's right. We're believing for a spring harvest, a year of impact, a year of fulfillment. Glory to God. And then it's a celebration of His glory. It's all of those things. Declaring that God is over this nation. Let's blow this thing right now and declare it, all right? That God is over this nation. Are you ready?
just declare that God is Lord over this nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> Brother Gail, you want to pull this back over for me? That is a shofar, a ram's horn. Well, today, we want to encourage you that we are going to have an Easter service, a time of celebration. And it's going to be this next Sunday. And here's how we're going to do it. By the way, I have a document right here from the Pennsylvania Department of Health that says uh, that tells us that we are allowed to meet. A little bit more, Gil. That we are allowed to meet, however, with discretion. And so we're going to ask you to help us to do this with discretion. It's going to be a drive-in type service. And we want everybody to stay in their cars with their windows rolled up. And we're going to get the word out to you. But it's only going to be 60 minutes long or less, this whole service, because we don't want you to be in your car too long. But help us to keep a, a, a in compliance with these recommendations by the Public Health Department, if you would. And do not get out of your car, please. And uh, then also, we want to have a good witness to the community, too. All right? In, in complying with these uh, recommendations. So, all right. No contact with anybody. We're just going to have a glorious time in the Lord. So, spring harvest. Now, we're going to go ahead and give this morning. And then we're going to have a little children's message. So we encourage all the young people, all the children, get ready. Get around the, the, your device there at home because we're going to have a little clip for you for, the, for all the kids. So get ready, kids. But today we want to encourage you, if you'd like to give, you can sow to Word Alive Church, P.O. Box 622, Elwood City, 16117. I'm going to say it again. Word Alive Church, P.O. Box 622, Elwood City, 16117. And Pastor Matt, come on up here and share with them. And he's, as he's coming, I'm going to read this scripture to you, Proverbs 1125. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Okay, Pastor Matt, come on up. So I have a question, Dad. Did you practice doing that? Because that sounded like you were back in your trumpet days. Pastor used to play the trumpet, so so we just encourage you. Uh, we had our best, our biggest month of giving online this past March, so praise the Lord for that. So we just encourage you to keep it up because we do have, you know, we're an organization, a nonprofit, so we just want to sow into people. We're we're helping people with food and and uh, we're just trying to keep the lights on. Amen. So we just encourage you to give by text seven two four. 790-2266, 790-2266, once you do it the first time, set it up, it's, uh, next time you want to give, it's just $10 and hit send, so you put that number where you would put your contact, 790-2266, and then put your amount, hit send, and then it'll give you, the first time it'll have you set up your name and your, your debit card, and then, and then once you save that, it's saved for good. So let's just pray over our tithes and, and uh, bless these offerings. Lord, we, we just come before you with a cheerful heart, Lord. Even in the time of famine, we want to sow into your kingdom, Lord. We want to we wanna not be led by fear or dread, but we want to sow into a eternal purposes this, this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh, no, you never let go every high, every low.
All right, so we got a great video we recorded a couple of days ago just for the kids. So gather your kids and have them, have them watch this. This is about Palm Sunday. Uh, so let's go to it. He, he got better, didn't he? What happened to him? He rose from the dead. <gasps> Yay! He's alive now? All right. Is Jesus your friend? Yeah, I bet he is. Wait. Whoa! I think, I think we should tell everybody goodbye now. What do you think? Bye. Wave to him. Hello. Goodbye. Are we saying hello or goodbye? Probably goodbye. 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 We're friends now, aren't we? <laughs> oh, I like your ears. Those are cute. <laughs> Good job, Kathy. Praise the Lord. Well, do you have your Bibles today? Good to see all of you. Glad you're with us. And we are ready to preach the word. Glory to God. So you can turn in your Bibles with me this morning to Luke 19, please. Luke chapter 19. And I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And let's pray first of all. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that Jesus broke the power of sin. He broke the power of bondage and chains when he went to Calvary's cross. And Father, we thank you that you came to set us free from all those things that would weight us down. Thank you for doing it, Lord, and we praise you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter 21, and beginning with verse 35, it says, well, a little bit, no, let's start with, uh, let's see, yes, about 35, it says, so they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. Then the crowd spread out their coats on the road ahead of Jesus. As they reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and to sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Jesus came down over the Kidron Valley from the Mount of Olives, and we know it says there that they laid out palm branches and their garments and so forth. In fact, one translation says they carpeted the road with their garments to give him acclamations of praise. And this is all fulfillment of uh, actually Zechariah chapter, I have a Bible here somewhere, another Bible. In Zechariah chapter 9, 9, let me read that to you. You can look at Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly, riding upon a donkey, upon a colt, the foal of a donkey. 
So this fulfilled prophecy, didn't it? Also prophecy fulfilled in Isaiah chapter 62, verse 11. And it goes on to say, bless the king. This is back in uh, Luke 19, verse 38. Bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. Jesus replied, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. <laughs> the King James says, if they hold their peace, the very stones will cry out. And so Jesus was honored as a conquering king. Now, a lot of the Jewish people thought he was coming to overthrow the Roman government and set up a natural kingdom. And so they were greatly rejoicing. And as it says here, they rejoiced over the miracles that they had seen. But Jesus didn't come to set up a natural kingdom. He came up to set up a spiritual kingdom. And so what they were praising him for in this triumphal entry was something that had not yet happened. It was about to happen. It was about to be consummated on Calvary's cross. But we want to tell you today just what Jesus was about. You know, when you think about this triumphal entry, it was about something that was going to transpire, as I said, and be consummated at the cross. But you see, let's fast forward for a moment and look ahead to the second advent when Jesus actually comes down upon this earth and steps foot on the Mount of Olives and the ground splits. There's a rift in the ground. I mean, there's a, like an earthquake. When he stepped foot on the Mount of Olives, and you see that right now, do you know that there is a, the, you know, what do we call those plates that we have? Uh, what are they? Tectonic plates, yeah. That there is a, a, a rift there. What do you call that? I forgot now. What is it? Fault line. Thank you. It's a fault line <laughs> right where the Mount of Olives is. In fact, they even tried. They were going to build a motel or a hotel there, and they decided not to because of this fault line that's right there in the Mount of Olives. So he's going to come down and step foot on the Mount of Olives, and he's going to set up his kingdom. But just prior to that, uh, in fact, I'm going to read to you from uh, Revelation 19. We're going to see what Jesus is going to do. He's coming as a conquering king, and so this triumphal entry, in a sense, is symbolic of what he was about to do in the second advent as he came back triumphantly to defeat the enemies of God. It says in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, Well, I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. In righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns, and he had a name written with that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him. Guess what? You're part of the armies that were in heaven. They're going to follow him in this imminent battle. Following him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of their mouth goeth the two-edged, his mouth rather, goeth the two-edged sword, that with it it should smite the nations. Now, I'm just going to flip back over to chapter 17 and verse 14 to just to give you another scripture to show that we are with him when he comes back for this battle that's going to take place against the, all the enemies of God in the valley of Megiddo, in the plain of Jezreel, where all the rebellious are going to gather to try to defeat Jesus, but the, just the opposite is going to happen. He's actually going to take the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the beast, and he's going to lock them in a bottomless pit for a thousand years but notice in chapter 17 verse 14 it says these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb that's jesus shall overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful everybody say i'm the called i'm the chosen i'm the faithful 
You see, we are going to be with him. Can you imagine riding white horses and there's Jesus out in front of us and we're looking over his shoulder watching what's going to take place as he kills the Antichrist, as he takes the beast, the false prophet, and the devil and locks them in a bottomless pit for a thousand years. And then the Bible says in Revelation 20 verse 4 that you and I are going to rule and reign with Jesus from Jerusalem. Woo, glory to God. I'm getting excited. I'm going to run here in a minute, but I'll run out of the camera. <laughs> so this triumphal entry, yes, could be symbolic of what's going to take place at the second advent. When Jesus conquers the enemies of God and he sets up his rule, his reign in Jerusalem. And in that thousand year period, it's going to be a unique time because do you know that the lion will be able to lie down near the lamb? Do you know that a child, it says in the Bible, will be able to put his hand in the hole in the, in the ground where a snake is and it will not bite him? It's going to be a glorious time where the devil will not be influencing people because he's bound. A glorious time where there's no suffering, there's no sickness. Glory to God. Free from the devil's hassle. And you and I, see, have just come back with Jesus. We just found that out. And we're going to look over his shoulder and we're going to see all this transpire. As perhaps like a laser comes out of his mouth and destroys the enemies of God. We will have been with him because we will have been in heaven in Father's house. That house, the Bible says, that is 1,200 feet long, 1,200 feet wide, and 1,200 feet high. The city four square. And you and I will be in Father's house. Remember in John 14, the Bible tells us that Jesus went to do what? To prepare a place for you. He's talking about that mansion in heaven. He's talking about Father's house where we just experienced the marriage supper of the Lamb, glory to God. Where you and I have experienced the, the, the Bema seat, the place of reward. The Bible says, I am coming and I, and I will bring my reward with me. Something to that effect. His reward is with him. I'm telling you, church, there is a reward for serving Jesus. There's a reward for rejecting sin. There's a reward for not living for the devil, but rather for living for God. There's a reward for not compromising, praise God. And part of that reward is that you're going to rule and reign with Jesus for a thousand years. Woo! <laughs> Triumphal entry. Symbolic. Yes of what was going to take place in the second advent, but it's also symbolic of the triumph that Jesus was about to, to consummate at Calvary's cross, where he destroyed the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8 says, For this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. He took authority over him, defeated him, and shed his own blood for you and me. Andrew Murray says that blood of Jesus purges me from every defilement of sin. His blood was shed. Purging us from every defilement of sin. You honor the blood by confessing I am cleansed by the power and the blood of Jesus. And we experienced then the impact. And remember the blood has done everything for you and me. He's done everything. Jesus has annihilated fears. Right now, you know what? Right now, God is, God is setting someone free out there from fears. He's lifting that burden off of your shoulder right now. Fear is being broken in your life in Jesus' name. Let it go and let faith come into your heart right now because this conquering king has put fear on the run. Glory to God. Hallelujah. By the way, Zechariah 14.4 is another scripture. But I forgot to mention that one to you. Zechariah 14.4. Look at this. It tells about this wonderful event, the second advent of Jesus. Zechariah 14.4. Then we'll get back to the cross again. Second Corinthians, uh, second, second, I'm sorry. Zechariah 14.4. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave. See, it's going to break at that fault line. In the midst thereof, toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a great, a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north. And half 
a bit toward the south. That's that glorious day. But anyhow, getting back to the cross of Calvary again, his, his, this, this Palm Sunday celebration is symbolic of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and what he accomplished at that point, at that time in his life. Breaking chains off of people's lives. In fact, let me read to you what it says in Colossians because this is precisely what happened in Colossians. In fact, no, I'll read it out of the NLT. Let me read it out of that. Colossians 3, and I believe it's at verse 13. Take a look at Colossians 3, 13. Colossians 2, excuse me, Colossians 2, 13. Notice what it says here. Verse 12. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to a new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins, and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all your sins. He canceled the record that contained the charges against us. You know, have you ever had your record expunged? Yeah, that, that happens to people, right? And the courts expunged their record. That's exactly what Jesus did. He expunged your record. He took it and destroyed it, nailing it to the cross, to Christ's cross. In this way, God disarmed the evil rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross of Christ. Aren't you glad he did that? Glory to God. I bet that person has got set free from fear is feeling better already. You see, Jesus defeated fear as well. He defeated the works of darkness, nailed it to the cross, spoiled principalities, as it says in the King James Version. Listen, the word spoiled, I looked that up. The word spoiled means this. I'm not talking about a spoiled child here. I'm talking about in Webster, it means to damage or to injure in such a way as to make useless, valueless, to destroy. That's what Jesus did to the principalities. He did damage to them to injure in such a way as to make useless, valueless, and to destroy them. He stripped them of goods, stripped the devil and plundered him to seize his goods by force. In other words, Jesus embarrassed the cohorts of hell and triumphed over them by his death, burial, and resurrection. And so this triumphal entry today is symbolic of Jesus winning over sin, sickness, death, hell, and the grave. And coronavirus is a sickness. And he won authority over that for you and me. We lost that authority at the fall of man. But he reinstated that authority that you and I have so that you can walk around and say, COVID-19 has no place in my body. You're under the curse. I break your power. Go from me now in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what he won for you. He purchased your freedom from bondage. You had bondage to fears. All your lifetime, the Bible says in Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, we're subject to the bondage of fear of death. But Jesus broke the power of that at the cross. Whenever he said, it is finished. Remember, there's one of the words he said, it is finished. The Greek word is tetelestai, and it means it is made perfectly perfect. The new covenant is made perfect, complete. The Old Testament was good. There was healing under the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. But I'm telling you, this is a new covenant. The Old Te Covenant was very good, but this is very, very good. It's new and better covenant that he consummated, and he said it is finished. It is made perfectly perfect, signed, sealed, and delivered. And what does that mean? That means the Old Covenant in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, forgiveness, you had forgiveness of sin. However, in the New Testament, you have remission of sins. Remission means cancellation of your penalty. Removal of your guilt. Cancellation of the penalty. Removal of your guilt. Totally set free. Exonerated, praise God. Your record has been expunged. In the Old Testament, 
And so I'm so glad today, aren't you, that he's taken the penalty of our sin, removed our guilt too, took your shame. But you know what else he did in the Old Testament? I remember this Palm Sunday triumphal entry is a celebration of impending victory. What did he win for you? Well, we know in the Old Testament, God did not remember your sins. He put them in the sea of forgetfulness. But under the new covenant, the new testament, God has not only forgotten your sins, but he tells you now you forget those sins, and there is no more consciousness of sin. Don't run around with this mindset, this sin consciousness. No, you've been forgiven. Have faith in the blood of Jesus, Romans 2, 325. Every time the devil tries to accuse you, when the accuser of the brethren comes, just say, no, I have faith in the blood of Jesus. I've been forgiven. I have no sin consciousness, praise God. Woo, I'm getting a little excited here today. <laughs> Preaching myself happy. You have no consciousness of sin. And so Jesus has done all of this for us. So you don't have to be governed by fear. Do you know people are manipulated by fear? Do you realize this? That in 1930, there were, let's see, what was it? 1930, 83% of the people were married. In 2020, only 50% of the people are married. What's the underlying cause? Fear. Fear to take the plunge. Fear to tie the knot. Huh? Fear to make a commitment. But he has broken that fear so that you can press forward and advance in your life and take the right person, of course, <laughs> the one that's led by the Spirit. But then the other hand, if, if you're married, stay married. Don't say, well, I got the wrong person. No, you make it work, all right? But certainly, Jesus came to do all of that. He's given you power over all the power of the enemy. So many avoid marriage due to fear. Don't do that, huh? Amen. He's given you, to, them, to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So Jesus set you free from fear. You don't have to fear someone doing harm to you. Use wisdom, but, you know, don't fear. You know, when I was a kid, my buddy had an older brother. My buddy Dennis had an older brother named Glenn. Glenn was a tough dude. Glenn had a, a Triumph motorcycle. One time he let me take it for a ride down the street, too. But nobody messed with Dennis because he had an older brother named Glenn. And Glenn would take care of anybody that did anything to Dennis. Are you listening to me? I want you to know that you and I have an elder brother, and his name is Jesus. And he will take care of anyone that tries to do harm to you. He'll watch over, protect you. The Bible says I, uh, he alone causes me to dwell in safety. Hallelujah. He is our protector. He is our keeper. He is our strength. He is our salvation. Glory to God. And so trust in him. He's paid a price. You just tell Satan, take your hands off of my family. Take your hands off of my uh, marriage. Take your hands off of my finances. Take your hands off of my, my nation, this country, in Jesus' name. You have been a, given authority over all these things. Now, I want to share another thing with you. Remember we said when Jesus came in on Palm Sunday that, that religious leaders said, oh, Tell your disciples to be quiet. And Jesus said, listen, if I tell them to hold their peace, even these rocks are going to cry out. Cry out in what? Praise and adoration to Jesus. There's something about praise that we need it these days like never before. Do you believe it today? Praise is so vitally important. I tell you that we need to be praising all the time. The Bible tells us, in fact, take a look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Hebrews 13, 15. Because we're going to see today that our praise will actually, our sacrifice of praise, I should say, Hebrews 13, 15, actually connects you to the sacrifice of his redemption that produced his redemption. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. 
Can you imagine the whole nation continually praising him? Continually. I said continually. Doing what, this was a wonderful praise team. Boy, the harmony was great this morning, wasn't it? Thank you. Those of you who participated in that, that was awesome. But we're to do this what? Continually. Offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And that's what they were doing. They were saying, Hosanna, save we pray. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Praise God. And so what are we doing? We're praising him to activate our covenant, to implement the promises, what he accomplished at Calvary's cross, and to sign, seal, and deliver our redemption. Let me give you just a quick illustration. There was a lady who developed smallpox. Well, this was a long time ago. And uh, she was a missionary. And she had this disease. She had not been vaccinated. And she was standing on the promise that no plague should come nigh her dwelling. Then a very bad case of confluent smallpox came on her. She didn't know what to do. So she asked the Lord. And the Lord told her to sing and to praise him for his faithfulness to his word. They isolated or quarantined her, and, well, kind of like what we're going through today. By the way, you know what? We've got a plague going right now, and we know as we read in the Old Testament, in some of the places in the Old Testament, in fact, I think I got some of those scriptures written down somewhere. I've been just kind of meditating on the Old Testament plagues that we found in, and you can check them out yourself, Numbers 16, Numbers 25, on Wednesday, I said Corinthians. It's, it was First Corinthians, uh, First Chronicles, First Chronicles twenty one, Second Samuel twenty four, and they were all about people who are not living in the covenants of God. And so there was a plague; they were killing thousands of people. And I got to thinking, wow, how did they get out of it when they repented? When they got their hearts right? When they when they said God? We offer up atonement, a sacrifice for our sins. Oh, God, forgive us now. And you know what? We as a nation need to do the same thing right now, to ask God to forgive us. Turn from our wicked ways. What did he say he would do? He would hear from heaven. He would forgive our sins and heal this land. And I'm believing that if we'll just turn as a nation. Oh, in fact, say this with me right now. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive us of our rebellion, our sin, our waywardness. Start with me individually. Turn me around. Forgive my sin. Heal this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's what stopped the plagues. It was when people repented. Well, Jesus went to the cross so that the, these plagues would be under the curse for the believer. But we want the whole nation to get in on this new covenant. Amen. And so what happened to her? Uh, they quarantined her, but she said if but she said if she didn't praise God, the very stones would cry out. So she sang and sang and praised and praised. And the doctor she feared uh, said he feared for her life that the case was serious, awful, complications threatened. But she praised and praised and sang and sang. And he said she was evidently delirious, but he had no, so little help that he could not restrain her. So she sang and sang and praised and praised, and they told her if by chance she recovered, she would be disfigured for life, and she sang and praised louder than ever. I saw a picture of Stalin. Remember World War II, Stalin? He had smallpox, and he had all these scars all over his face. So it does scar you normally. They asked, why do you praise so much? She answered, because I have so many pox on me, and I'm praising God for his faithfulness for each one separately. So the Lord had sown, shown her a vision of two baskets. One was containing her praising, and the other basket, and that basket was half full. The praise basket was half full. The other basket, which, he was, uh, which was her problem, her sickness, or, or could you say the smallpox, or her, yeah, her problem was full. That basket was full. So the Lord told her that the praise basket must be filled so that it would outbalance the, the problem basket. So she kept 
at it. He told her, you got to fill the praise basket so it'll outbalance the testing, the problem basket. So her songs and shouts were so spirit-filled that they were contagious. And the Christian nurses couldn't resist joining in, so they kept the place ringing. At last, the Lord showed her that the praise basket was now full and overflowing. And when the praise basket sank, then the testing basket lifted into the air. In a moment, as it seemed, the eruption and all tenants' symptoms vanished, leaving no trace in the way of so much as a single scar. In other words, she was standing on the promise that she would not get smallpox, and then it broke out. And sometimes you're believing God for something, and it looks like what's happening is the opposite of what you're believing for. You ever been there? Believing God, and it seems like the opposite happens. So she said, Lord, what am I supposed to do about this? And the Lord said, I want you to praise me for the faithfulness, my faithfulness to my word. So she started singing and praising. The doctors told her to shut up and be quiet. She kept on singing and praising, singing and praising. And so other nurses that were Christian joined in and were singing and praising. So she got louder and louder until the Lord showed her in the praise ba- that the, her praise basket got filled. And when the praise basket got filled, then it sunk. And it lifted off of, from her all the symptoms of the smallpox. And almost... It, It seemed like a moment that all symptoms vanished, leaving no trace in the way of so much as a single scar. No scar. I believe some things we're facing, you're facing right now, can vanish and leave no trace that it has ever been there. Lillian B. Yeomans calls this the praise cure. This is what she says. It's not the praise cure works every time. It's not unpleasant. It's delightful. It's not expensive. Actually, the cost of it was met by Jesus through his blood, and the praise cure is available every moment to every one of us. So you are, are you ready to take your medicine, <laughs> the praise cure? In other words, you, are you ready to take this praise cure? Just believe that what God says, what Jesus has done for your body, spirit, and soul, and body. Think about it, talk about it, sing about it, and shout about it, and the praise cure has begun. Oh, glory. She says the praise cure works every time. Amen. It just doesn't work in one area. It'll work in every area of your life. How's your praise basket doing today? I don't know how big your problem basket is, but if you'll find your praise basket, it'll lift everything off of you. So just walk around your house. Just start praising God. Thank him for the, his faithfulness to his word. <laughs> glory to God. I wonder if we could get some of the wor- or worship team back up here. Let's just do a little bit of praising. How about that? Amen. Hallelujah. So if you're not feeling so good, are you ready to take the praise cure today? Yes. Glory to God. Watch it lift off of you. The problem will disappear without a trace, without a scar, no evidence that you ever had the problem. Amen. Praise will heal your mind, too. Did you know that? It'll heal your family, heal your marriage when you begin to praise Him. Regardless of how it works, go ahead and shout about it. Fill your basket with praise. Amen? Open your mouth wide. He says, and I will fill it. What's He going to fill it with? Praise. Go ahead and receive today. Act on the promises. And remember what I said earlier about the sacrifice of praise will connect you to your His sacrifice of redemption. This is how you activate the covenant. This is how you implement. Matt, if you have anything else to say to that, we know that praise brings strength, doesn't it? Matthew 21, the Bible says there is strength in praise. It also says it will shut, it will still the enemy and the the offender. It will shut the devil up, in other words. Has he been working on your mind with fear? Has your mind been working overtime? Have you been bewildered and and your mind's just racing here and there? Just begin to lift your hands and praise him today and watch what happens. Oh, let's go ahead and do it, guys. I'm ready. (laughs) Don't give me an excuse to start preaching again. (laughs) Are you ready to receive? Listen, in 2 Chronicles 20, 20. When they began to praise, that's when things got turned around. Not when they finished 
It was when they began to praise is when God set ambushments and defeated the enemy. And then they were going out, and I think it took them three days to gather up all the spoils of war. So when you begin to praise, you're going to see a difference. Not at the end of it. When you begin to praise, God will be going to work for you behind the scenes, places you don't even see, taking care of your future, taking care of problems that are, that are at work right now in your life. Come on, let's begin to praise Him today. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. In the middle of the storm
We're going to sing louder and louder, Lord. Breakthrough is coming. six o'clock for our communion service good friday communion service and then sunday morning come on out and we're going to have you parked out in the in the parking lot lined up to hear the word of god please don't get out of your car thank you for helping us with that we love you have a great day in jesus and shout amen somebody
Have a great day, everybody. See you on Wednesday.